in the course of human events, this is all pretty recent, right? Yes. They found nuclei, there are cells around nuclei, animals and plants have cells. Yes. Then what happens next? Well, after a gap of some 30 years or so, uh, people began to see cells dividing. Cell division is the process that the cell of a plant or an animal goes through to duplicate itself. While scientists had known about the process for decades, German zoologist Walter Fleming was the first to describe it and to publish his findings. And his book was published uh, in 1881. This book was momentous and extremely important in the history of cell biology because Fleming described cell division in a way which would be acceptable in a modern journal. Fleming observed the process of cell division in great detail. With the help of a powerful new microscope, and new dye staining techniques. With these innovations, he was able to identify structures that later were named chromosomes. And then, his great discovery. During cell division, the chromosomes undergo dynamic change. They divide into two identical parts, one for each daughter cell. Fleming called this process mitosis. So that's the whole process of mitosis as he described it in yeah. 1881. In a tadpole tail. In a tadpole tail, yes. And he knew to go to the tail because the tail is growing, or the, the back it, end exactly. of a tadpole, there's a lot going on. Exactly, yes. He knew that uh, if you're going to see cell division in detail, that in detail, sorry for the pun. I, I like the pun, <laughs> kooky uh, for the pun. Then. Uh, that was one of the places to look. The splitting of chromosomes during mitosis was a breakthrough discovery. It opened the door for scientists to begin understanding how one cell can turn into a complex organism made of many interacting cells. Around the time that Walter Fleming was studying the cell division process, biologists already knew that fertilization resulted from the union of two sex cells, sperm and egg. What they didn't know was why these were the only types of cells in the body capable of reproducing new life. What made them different? The first answer was provided in 1883 by Belgian zoologist Edward von Beneden. Von Beneden was studying a species of roundworm when he discovered that nearly all of its cells contained four chromosomes. The only exceptions were the roundworm's sex cells, the male sperm and the female egg. These cells had only two chromosomes. Van Beneden observed that once two of the sex cells came together, a full set of four chromosomes appeared in the fertilized egg. But just why the sex cells had only half the number of chromosomes compared to all the other cells was still a mystery. Then in 1887, German biologist August Weismann entered the picture. He knew about the work of van Beneden, who, who had shown that the sperm and the egg bring in equal numbers of chromosomes. But van Beneden's work had not really worked out the details of how the chromosomes were reduced in number. He saw them, he saw <laughs> them go in half, and he saw them recombine. He saw that the sperm and the egg brought in half the number of chromosomes as the body cell, but he didn't really know how they got rid of the half that they got rid of. So Weismann discussed how this might happen from a theoretical standpoint. And he said, well, <clears throat> what you could have would be that either every one of the chromosomes would just split in half, and half would go off one way, and half would go another way, or you could have it more complicated, that the chromosomes could pair, and then, instead of splitting, they just separate again. 
After years of studying the behavior of chromosomes, Weissman determined that at some point, a developing organism signals its sex cells to divide their number of chromosomes in half. Weissman called this very special form of cell division meiosis. I think they will look back and see this as the golden age of biology because, let's say, for 200 years, between 1800 and 2000, we went from not knowing what distinguished a stone from a frog, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and now we know the difference between a stone and a frog. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that in a real sense, we've answered the old philosophical question of what is life? Maybe not to everybody's satisfaction, <laughs> but uh, we're well on the way.